Hello, I'm Beth Rennie, Editor-in-Chief at ASCM, and I'm joined by our CEO, Abe Ashkenazi, and you are watching SCM This Week. Hi, Abe, how are you? I'm fine, Beth, and yourself? I'm doing great. Uh, so I'm looking forward to our chat today. This one's going to be kind of fun for me, actually. Um, for anyone who read Abe's article this past Friday, he talked about um, how you talk to your friends about what you do as a supply chain professional, uh, what supply chain is, what your day-to-day -day looks like at work. Um, and you know, you shared a little bit about what it's like when you're talking to friends and colleagues and how there are some challenges there. Uh, so I thought it would be fun if I asked my friends if they have questions about what I do, what supply chains are. Um, so I talked to some friends in a bunch of different industries. I have someone from finance, someone from engineering, someone from education, and someone from project management, which you actually talked about this past Friday as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we have a wide range of questions from my friends. And interestingly though, um, overwhelmingly, their questions involved the fact that although supply chains are composed of things that are quite tangible, whether that's raw materials, machines, products, people, um, the concept of supply chain management itself is a little less tangible. Um, so Abe, I wanted to start there. Uh, I'd like you to answer the question, where does the supply chain actually begin and end? And I think my friend was wondering, does it start like with manufacturing and end with receipt? Like how do you define the limits of a supply chain? It's a great question and a great topic for supply chain professionals and non-supply chain professionals to talk about uh, sort of satisfying needs and wants. Because at the end of the day, that's what supply chains do. They address either a, a response to a want or a need for consumers, patients, and uh, companies alike. So all the activities can be boiled down into satisfying either a consumer, a patient, or a expectation for a product or a service. So while it sounds fairly tight in terms of, yes, it does solve a need or a want, the activities behind it are highly sequenced and highly variable depending on the industry that we're talking about or depending on the product that we're talking about, how much transformation occurs. Additionally, it doesn't stop with the, you know, the receipt. You've got recycling, you've got reusing, you've got waste, you've got circular economy concepts. There are a lot of activities that encompass the supply chain beyond just the raw materials to transforming it, to delivering it to the end consumer or to the patient. All right, thank you. And uh, maybe a little bit easier this question. Uh, my friends also wanted to know, do supply chains refer to only physical goods mm -hmm. and physical distribution, or can they be non-physical? And if so, how? Yeah, uh, both, uh, literally. Uh, when we're talking about the physical, those are easy to see and touch and feel. I mean, we can see the process from either a grower or a producer to a production or manufacturing facility, how the product's transformed, how it's warehoused, delivered, maintained, and uh, supported. The non-physical flows are including data, the information that flows through the system in terms of when to produce, how much to produce, and where to produce, and where to deliver. So a lot of the decisions that are uh, driving the supply chain activity, the physical flow, are the non-physical data inputs into the system that supply chain professionals, sales and operations, and the entire organization aligns to. Additionally, you've got other types of non-physical, you know, supply chain activities, uh, process redesign, the ability to evaluate the activities of an organization or the supply chain and how to more efficiently and effectively transform a product or service to a consumer and patient expectation. We saw this with the transformation on utilization of food away from a industrial, commercial, and um, academic setting into a home base. These require process redesigns where you don't see them until the uh, production lines change or delivery uh, changes or the organization uh, responds to it. Additionally, you've got cash, oftentimes electronic transformation of uh, data and uh, financial activities in the organization. These are all encompassed part of the supply chain it, remove one of those elements and you disrupt the supply chain. So the non-physical activities are as critical as the physical activities because in a lot of ways they drive the decisions and the response to the wants and the needs that we identified in the beginning. All right. And something else you talked about, you said pretty much 
everything has a supply chain, no matter what the industry may be. So my friends wanted to know if everything has a supply chain, are there different styles of supply chains or do they all basically work in the same way? Uh, I think this is where the variability benefits and challenges a lot of our uh, understanding of supply chains. Uh, supply chains are almost as unique as every company or every industry. Uh, when we take a look at various industries, whether they be food or aerospace or pharmaceutical, each organization has different supply chains. Where do they source from? Where do they manufacture? Where do they deliver? How do they transport their goods and services? So each organization has different activities within their supply chain that makes them unique. Oftentimes there's different vendors. Oftentimes they may be combined vendors. If you have a limited resource of a particular product, organizations may collaborate to say, okay, let's ensure that we're all getting the appropriate quantity and quality of the raw material that we need through this one vendor. So you've got a lot of collaboration as well as a lot of intellectual property and a lot of protection patentable activities that are included in the supply chain. And so when we take a look at a supply chain where you may learn a lot of the same concepts about how the supply chain moves from your design, your planning, your sourcing, your manufacturing, delivering, warehousing, supporting, all the steps that are included in the supply chain, each one of them will have different players. And so you'll have different vendors. You'll have different transportation routes. You'll have different decisions on warehousing and distribution. So while you may see one supply chain, when you've seen one, you've seen one. It is rarely that you've seen one where you see them all. But what's important is that as individuals evaluate and learn more about supply chain, they're able to evaluate how to improve their supply chains with that information that we talked about in our previous question. So uh, this is a huge opportunity for organizations that are undergoing digital transformation or uh, organizational uh, optimization on how to improve their supply chains. There are a whole host of opportunities that are included in the supply chain. As we talk about all the different activities, you can have an impact on the raw material. You can have impact on the labor. You can have impact on logistics. This is a really dynamic field, and so rarely do you see the same supply chain even within the same industry for organizations. All right, you just talked a little bit a minute ago about vendors and partners. So something else they wanted to know was what entities control a supply chain, and how much control does a manufacturer have over everyone else in its network? Yeah, that's, uh, I, I think part of the challenge a lot of organizations face is you know, how much of their supply chain do they uh, overtly control versus how much is controlled by uh, either uh, policy, government, and or other organizations, your vendors. Uh, if you have a sole source vendor and, and they're the only um, organization that provides this particular part or raw material, you may find yourself in a partnership responsibility or relationship with that particular vendor to make sure that you are as informed about their decisions and their strategies to ensure that you are not surprised by any of the decisions that they make. Additionally, when you start to take a look at consumers, uh, you may end up with a very small consumer base. Um, aerospace, there are only so many companies that buy planes. So it's tough to, you know, if one company decides that they would not, you know, like their plane, you rarely can go out and find another, uh, you know, consumer or another company to buy a plane. Oftentimes there's very limited. So depending on the, uh, the supply chain, depending on the product, you're going to see different controls depending on scarcity, depending on the ownership of the product or service, depending on intellectual property, as well as the manufacturing capability of organizations. There's a number of ways to differentiate yourself and create a competitive advantage for your organization. This is part of the supply chain process is optimizing and enabling an organization to sustain themselves through their supply chain and through their staff, through their production, through their raw materials. Every step along the way has an opportunity to be improved and more importantly, for an organization to take control of it. Uh, particularly important when you're talking about disruption and responses to disruption. If you find yourself that you are not in control of your uh, supply chain and the disruption and or a, um, you know, a gap occurs, you may find yourself at a um, without options, and that is not a good situation in the supply chain. Yep, and we've certainly seen a lot of that recently. 
Yep. It's actually a great segue to my final question. Um, obviously, everyone wanted to talk about COVID-19. Uh, supply chain has been all over the news recently and you know, becoming part of something that you talk about at the kitchen table these days. Mm -hmm. uh, so they wanted to know, what does this pandemic mean for supply chains? But more importantly, what does it mean to them? So what are supply chains doing right now and how is it affecting regular people? Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, there are a couple of, uh, implications here. First, uh, conscious consumerism. Uh, uh, the buyer as the patient and or the consumer is much more aware of what the implications of supply chain are today. Uh, we've seen the benefits of it in terms of being able to respond to disruptions. We've also seen the gaps that occur when we have surge and or a shift in utilization in supply chain that we are not as agile or responsive as we need to be today. So uh, quite a bit of attention is going to have to be paid to that. With the impact on you know um, pharmaceuticals, personal protection equipment, and a whole host of the disruptions that we saw, I think we'll see that quite a bit of attention is paid to risk and resiliency moving out of this, as well as the consumer's awareness of uh, hopefully that we don't need to see panic buying. You saw that um, organizations do respond to the supply chains and that it is, um, it does take time to respond, but they do respond. More importantly, I think we're going to see quite a bit more on uh, flexibility and digital transformation for organization to be um, much more agile than they have been in the past as opposed to where they are today. So we expect to see much more focus on the digital focus to enable organizations to, number one, avoid any disruptions. Secondly, if it's impossible to avoid, to be able to respond rapidly, and then finally, to be able to recover and get back to normalized operations as soon as possible. I think everybody is hoping that we get to that point sooner than later uh, so that we can understand what more normalized operations are. Yep, and so speaking of recovery, I want to invite everyone to watch the new podcast that ASCM is producing with Supply Chain Management Review. It is called Rebound, so look for that on our LinkedIn and YouTube channels starting next week. And these chats with Abe and me will also continue every other week, so please join us. Thank you so much for these fun Supply Chain 101 questions and responses, Abe. I really enjoyed it. Have a great day, Beth. You too.